Welcome back survivalists. So a few weeks ago, I did a video breaking down how to build a FEMA disaster kit. This is essentially the 11 items that FEMA wants all Americans to keep in their homes at all times to be prepared for any number of natural disasters which may occur and do occur quite often. And that's essentially like a basic disaster kit. It's just kind of the essentials. If you haven't seen that video yet, you should really check it out. I'll have a link to it at the end of this one. But FEMA actually has an additional 15 items that it recommends all Americans keep in their homes as well after you take care of that essential kit, after you get those first 11 items, these are the 15 advanced items. And so that's what I'm gonna break down for you today, how to build an advanced FEMA emergency disaster kit. And in case you're wondering why I'm wearing a hat in today's video, well, let's just say I broke down and let my wife give me a Corona cut. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely be wearing a lot more hats in the next couple of weeks. All right, so the first advanced item that FEMA recommends that you keep in your survival kit after you build that essential and that basic kit is gonna be any prescription medication that you may have. And this is especially true if you take some kind of life-saving prescription medication. I highly recommend that you try and see if you can get one to two months supply and always have one to two months supply in your home at all time. And we're actually seeing this exact scenario play out right now with this pandemic going on. A lot of people that rely on life-saving medication are having a harder time getting it from their doctors. And this is because of a few different reasons. You know, some of it's just supply chain issues. A lot of our medications are actually made overseas and shipped into America. So if something happens to that overseas country, that could absolutely disrupt that supply chain. Another issue is that people are kind of panicking and now trying to stockpile the medication now in the middle of a crisis rather than slowly accumulating a stockpile over a longer period of time to be prepared for a crisis. So if you're on any sort of medication, try to have one to two months supply in your home and even in your disaster kit at any given time. If your doctors won't allow you to get a hold of that much medication, just try to have a few weeks at least worth of supplies just in case there's a bad hurricane or tornado and you can't get access to any more medication. So next, FEMA recommends that you keep all your important family documents in a safe place. So these are things like copies of your health and life insurance, bank account statements, maybe your IDs, maybe copies of your will. Personally, I keep all these things in a fireproof safe and it does have a handle here so I could just grab these and go. And if there ever is a bad hurricane or a bad flood or even a fire and my house burns down, I know that all these documents will be safe and I can secure these afterwards. If you go through a disaster and you're forced to rebuild your life from scratch, having access to all of these documents is gonna make your life so, so much easier. So the next item is gonna be household bleach and a medicine dropper. So this is one of the simplest ways to disinfect contaminated water is just use bleach and an eyedropper. And I'm gonna quote FEMA directly on this one. When diluted nine parts water to one part bleach, bleach can be used as a disinfectant. Or in an emergency, you can use it to treat water by using 16 drops of regular household liquid bleach per gallon of water. So I know a lot of people like to glorify prepping and really focus on the guns and the knives and all that cool stuff. But with prepping, your priorities of survival have not changed. And at the top of your priorities is clean drinking water. And in my opinion, you should be buying a gallon of bleach and an eyedropper long before you even think about buying guns and knives and any of that other junk. So the next item is going to be emergency reference materials. So this could be things like books, right? I've got tons of books laying around my house about prepping and survival and emergency preparedness. And you can also invest in like pamphlets like this that you keep in your survival kit. These ones here are from the Pathfinder School of Survival. Personally, I have entire books about food preparations and hunting and fishing and emergency first aid. So if I ever had to go several weeks or even a month without access to the internet, I'd still have all of that essential information at the tips of my fingers. A good book to start would be the SAS Survival Guide. It's kind of a general survival guide for all sorts of situations. And I personally keep that inside my emergency disaster kit. So the next item that you should keep in your disaster kit is going to be cold hard cash, preferably in small denominations if possible. If your community is going through a multi-day power outage and now your grocery stores and gas stations can't process credit cards anymore, Guess what? They're going to be relying on cash and only those families that are prepared and have cash available are going to be able to buy groceries. And if the situation gets really bad and suddenly you have to barter with your neighbors and other people in your community for essential items, 
credit cards and bank accounts are full of cash are not gonna do anything for you. You need physical cash available to you. And I know there's a lot of people out there who say, well, that's why I stock up on silver coins and gold bars and all this other nonsense. But guess what? If you're going through a week-long power outage and you wanna buy a couple of gallons of gas off your neighbor for your generator, and you're trying to do that in gold nuggets and silver coins, most likely your neighbor would have absolutely no idea what the value is of those items. And without access to the internet, they have no way of even telling if those items are authentic or not, or how much they should be selling you gas for. That's why in a short-term disaster situation, cash is still king. So the next item is going to be a fire extinguisher. So everybody should already have at least one fire extinguisher in their home, probably under your kitchen sink or in your closet closet somewhere, but FEMA's recommending that you have another one and you keep it in your emergency preparedness kit as well. And I agree with this. If you're relying on things like candles and propane burners or even wood stoves, you are significantly increasing your chances of a fire in your home, especially if you have small kids running around or maybe people are just not as familiar with wood burning stoves or propane burners. So go to Home Depot, buy a fire extinguisher for $15 to $20 and keep it in your emergency kit with all your other gear. So the next item that they recommend is matches with some sort of waterproof container. So fire is really important to survival in general. With fire, you can provide yourself with heat, you can cook food, you can purify water. But that all starts with being able to create that fire in the first place. And that's where just a simple pack of matches comes in. But just make sure that you have that waterproof container so that they don't get ruined in case of a flood or a tornado or a blizzard or something along those lines. So the next items are gonna be things like books, games, puzzles, something to keep you and your family occupied during a disaster. In an emergency situation, you may be required to shelter in place for several days, possibly even several weeks. And without access to the internet or the TV, you and your family are gonna get very bored very quickly. And it's not just a matter of you guys getting bored, but it's a matter of you guys keeping your discipline and not getting complacent and not doing something stupid just because you get so tired of being cooped up in a house the whole time. So get some books for you and your family to read, get some playing cards, there's tons of variations of games that you can play with just a single deck of playing cards. Just something to keep your minds active and keep your spirits and keep you motivated and keep you and your family from doing something stupid. So the next item is gonna be a mess kit. And this is something that you can buy at like a camping or an outdoor store, or you can just make it yourself. So this could be as simple as uh, having some paper cups and paper towels and paper plates and some plastic utensils to use for eating food in an emergency situation where you may not be able to access your usual utensils. Or maybe you're in a situation where your access to water is cut off and you don't have enough water to clean your utensils and in which case you'll be dependent on disposable paper plates and utensils for you and your family. So next items are gonna be personal hygiene products, including feminine products. So kind of the worst case scenario is that you and your family may have to shelter in place in one single room. And if you're all in there for several days, it's going to get messy, it's going to get stinky and kind of gross. And you wanna make sure you have things like deodorant and soap and toothbrush and toothpaste and any other personal hygiene products that you use on a daily basis, make sure you have a backup of that supplies in your emergency kit as well. So the next item is gonna be sleeping bags and extra blankets for everybody in your family. So again, this one's gonna be more climate specific, but if you're in a climate that experiences bad blizzards, even just every now and then, if you lose power for a week because of a bad blizzard, you wanna be able to keep you and your family warm during that time. Or there may be other disasters where you and your family all wanna sleep in the same room, maybe for safety and security reasons, or maybe just to help your body heat all heat up that one room in your home. So maybe Make sure you have extra blankets and quilts and sleeping bags for each member of your family. So the next item can be a complete change of clothes for all members of your family. And I agree with this. I think that this is a good idea. And when you're building a bug out bag, for example, and that's one of the recommended items as well as a complete change of clothes. And a change of clothes can be really helpful for any number of reasons. Maybe you're experiencing a bad flood. Maybe you're in California and your house is about to be burnt down from one of these wildfires and you need to just grab your emergency kit and throw it in your truck and run with it. And you know that you have a change of clothes for all members 
of your family in there. So just having at least one set of clothes for all members of your family is a pretty good idea. So the next item is gonna be pet food and additional water and supplies for your pets. And again, this may be something a lot of people don't really think about. They probably get into the habit of going to the grocery store once a week and buying dog food or cat food for their pets. But again, what if there's a hurricane or a flood or a blizzard and there are supply chain issues all of a sudden, or maybe you physically can't get access to the grocery store to buy food for your pets. That's why I always recommend that you always have keep at least two weeks worth of supplies for your pets in your home at all times. And as you go into the grocery store once a week, you're kind of moving through that supplies and using the older stuff that you bought two weeks ago. And this way, when you are in a disaster, you're not left with that horrible choice of letting your pets starve or giving them your own food. So the next item that they want you to include is infant formula and diapers. So obviously this is more specific to if you have any babies or toddlers, but stocking up on things like diapers and wet wipes and baby formula was probably not something at the forefront of your mind. But if you have any small children that need essential items like that, try to have at least a couple of weeks worth of supplies in your home at all times. Hey, if you haven't watched my video about the 11 items that FEMA wants all Americans to keep in their homes at all times, click right here to learn how to build a basic FEMA disaster kit. And don't forget to subscribe for more prepping and survival information and hit that little bell icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys over in the next video.